organization established by late Dr. D.P. Khandelwal in the year 1984 has local chapters in every state. IAPT RC1 is a chapter of IAPT for Delhi and Haryana. It has now grown into major organizations with about 6,500 like members spread all over about 1,500 organizations throughout the country, including about 100 members from abroad. The members include school, college, university teachers, research workers, and science administrators and enthusiasts. For its grassroots working, the country is divided into 20 regions, each with a regional council. The Apex Executive Council coordinates and directs the effort at the national level. IAPT conducts the national standard examination in physics, chemistry, biology, astronomy, junior science and national graduate physics examination usually in November each year. IAPT RC1 organized various activities for promotion of physics and physics education. In the pandemic COVID-19, we have successfully conducted many important lectures for school and college teachers and students. We organized various workshops for the benefits of school and college students and faculties. IAPT RC1 with various eclords to its name has become an influential powerhouse to reckon with. From organizing various lectures in COVID pandemic situation to organizing various workshops, annual convention, Professor Veen Ratna Memorial Lectures and many more, IAPT RC1 has paved its way and reached the pinnacle of successes. IAPT RC1 witnessed many achievements and successfully conducted many important events even in pandemic situation. This is all about IAPT. Now, moving forward, I request Dr. Yogesh Kumar, Secretary, Indian Association of Physics Teacher, to kindly introduce our eminent speaker, Professor Raghunath Sahu, who has joined us online. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's an honor moment for me to introduce my senior colleague and our eminent speaker, Professor Raguna Sahu, who is currently Professor of Experimental High Energy Physics at IIT Indore. He earned his PhD in Experimental High Energy Physics from IOP Bhubaneswar, India, and working in the STAR experiment at Vic Brookhoven National Laboratory, USA. Later, he was a visiting scientist at IOP Bhubaneswar and University of Cape Town, South Africa. His association with large-scale high-energy experiments goes back to 2001 when he started working both at the Brookhoven National Laboratory, USA and the world's largest laboratory, Sir Geneva. Presently, he serves as a member in ALICE and CBM Collaboration Board and a member in ALICE India Management Board. He is one of the few experimental high energy physicist who has visible contribution to the phenomenology of high energy physics. With 12 PhDs and postdoctoral fellows, around 45 MSc and BTEC students leading to around 65 students in total, Professor Sahu has made a visible high energy physics group and with the highest publication record in India. Here, I am delighted to mention that Professor Sahu has approximately 43,500 number of citations, H index 132, and average citation per paper 102.5. He has co authored around 500 journal publications, one, uh, one book to be published, and one book chapter. He has handled several high end and research projects to tune of 10 crores making it the highest at IIT Indore. Professor Sahu has been a referee in more than 10 international scientific journals, a guest editor in Advances in High Energy Physics, an editorial member of the journal Physics published by MDPI from the Switzerland. Professor Sahu has delivered lectures, curricula and seminars in several national and international conferences and institutions. Professor Sahu is an elected fellow of Institute of 
physics united kingdom for his pioneering contribution and leadership in physics professor sahu is associate dean of international relation at iit indore and leading the science out outreach and bilateral multi country collaborations he is presently the chairperson of alis star india collaboration board and was deputy spokesperson of alis india collaboration during 2021-23 consisting of 100 scientists and engineers he was awarded with the most prestigious sir scientific associateship to work at largest laboratory in the world sun geneva switzerland during 2021-22 he is ugc nominee for dr h s gaur central university sagar community colleges under nsqf 2022 Professor Sahu, uh, Professor Sahu name has appeared within India's 24 five most productive scientists, which is world top two percent in the Alpha Doger uh, Scientific Index 2023, based on scientific performance and the added value of the scientific productivity of individual scientists. He has made he has many feathers in his cap, and here I have mentioned very few, but the list is too long. of his achievements it's a privilege or uh, it's a uh, prestige beyond world to summon and i request professor sahu to enlighten the audience with his lecture so i welcome you sir yeah, uh, thank you and uh, good morning to all people online and offline and uh, i guess you can hear me can you hear me well yes we can okay thank you so uh, i thank uh, the organizers of uh, iapt the indian association of physics teachers which uh, has been doing a marvelous job in the country uh, in promoting science education and physics in particular from the school level and i thank the iapt organizers for the kind invitation uh, to deliver this prestigious 11th professor vedratna national memorial lecture and um, before i start actually i have uh, chosen a, a topic which is journey of subatomic particles from the laboratories to uh, delhi life and uh, uh, i have prepared keeping students of uh, colleges and schools in mind making it uh, highly simplified and my apology to the subject experts if that goes actually uh, you know uh, that uh, appears to be very simple but uh, going in line with uh, iapt's uh, aim of uh, promoting physics education in the country and in general science so i have prepared to encourage the students of schools and colleges so apology for the exports so let me start uh, the talk now so the question is uh, why science i remind uh, uh, the nobel laureate and the genius of the century uh, einstein albert einstein so who told that equations are more important to me because politics are for the present but an equation is something for the eternity and you find the same thing in the graveyard of erwin schrodinger another nobel laureate in physics the famous wave equation for electron is uh, written and uh, the importance of science is not only uh, realized today it was also seen much earlier uh, in time and before we uh, go through so i must remind that uh, education is not the learning of facts but the training of the mind to think and again for the students this uh, daily event of falling objects and the discovery of uh, gravitational uh, force is also something which reminds us that a genius or curious mind can come to discoveries so now if you again ask the question why science i, I again uh, quote couple of you know important quotations in the uh, history of science so one uh, important quote from stephen hawking says you the we the human beings are the advanced breed of monkeys on a minor planet of a very average star but we can understand the universe that is the special thing with us and that makes a human being something very special and we do science because we are curious like a child 
and the magic of physics lies in its ambitious goal of pushing the subject boundaries of knowledge from finding the god particle to predicting the fate of the universe it is essentially driven by curiosity of mind and again in 1933 just little before the world war 2 when albert einstein moved to princeton the famous physicist paul langevin commented that you know it is an important event because the the moving of albert einstein from europe to united states is essentially the transfer of the vatican from rome to uh, the new world and the pope of physics has moved and the united states will now become the center of natural science you see in early days also people realized the importance of science and as of today if you look at um, united states not only it is uh, advanced uh, in basic science but also in technology because the foundation stone of science is very solid and uh, paul langevin in 1933 could foresee the movement of einstein to us could bring a big change of uh, changing the epicenter of science from uh, europe to usa so now if you look at fundamental science and technology the accumulation of knowledge uh, uh, new fundamental knowledge is actually the motto of science and the development of scientists and engineers are the mandates of most of the research laboratories on basic science if you look at the technological applications application is not a formal mandate for us i will explain why although uh, applications are important in the present day uh, perspective why basic science makes better sense before uh, the applications come up and the results of basic science do not lead to immediate applications if you are expecting the science i am doing in my laboratory today it will have an immediate application tomorrow so then i think we have not understood the motto of science so today's basic science is tomorrow's technology and the exploration in the new domain of basic science require new instruments so this we realize slowly and hence the new technological uh, uh, applications so now if you look at the basic science aspect and the corresponding applications we know theory of electricity and how electric light came up as applications similarly i have made a list of some of the basic sciences and their applications in the society and uh, if you think of the special theory of relativity or general theory of relativity which happens to be uh, to start with a mathematical theory if you ask what is the application we are not knowing at the moment of discovery uh, of uh, special theory of relativity till many other applications came up and as an example i must tell you that a global positioning uh, system the gps nowadays everybody uses starting from a car driver to the pilot flying a aircraft and if you do not take uh, special theory of relativity into account the landing or instrument landing of uh, aircrafts is completely impossible because that will induce a error of minimum 2 kilometers and you may be knowing that the air strip or the runway distance varies from 2 to few kilometers so it's very important that even if it is a physics theory it has got immense applications in the technologies which we use every day similarly if you talk about nuclear magnetic resonance it started with a basic science concept and we know this brain imaging using mri technique and all how it is essential and how it is saving many lives every day so this ease of living is associated with technology and technology as we understand now is a by product of basic science which cannot be neglected to have a technologically developed country we should have equal emphasis on basic science to establish this concept or the uh, opinion which i gave now the growth and application of fundamental science if you look at this py pyramidal structure so pyramidal structure of growth of technology has a solid base on basic science as you can see the classical physics or the atoms nuclei the particle physics quarks and gluons and then you look into the higher dimensions you know lens scale where planets stars and galaxies are covered as astronomical objects so our understanding of the whole universe has given us a solid 
uh, science background on which a pyramidal structure of uh, technology stands. And if you revert it, for example, if we do not have a basic science uh, background in a solid way, we cannot have technological development in a uh, uh, proper way. So the abstract knowledge, fundamental knowledge becomes familiar when you go to uh, technological applications like switching on a light or watching a TV. So John Bell, when he came up with uh, entangled quantum states, and parallelly, Einstein being a genius of the century and a Nobel laureate, gave the opinion God does not play dice. This concept of quantum entanglement or the quantum physics was completely abstract mathematics at that time. And on the basis of this quantum entanglement, the technology transmitting securely coded messages made 2007 public vote in Geneva. So this uh, today's pure theory can come up with uh, technological applications uh, in the coming days. And these essential elements of quantum computers are essentially from this uh, theoretical development. So if you ask us today, the best theory in physics literature, which is uh, your standard model of particle physics or unification of weak and electromagnetic forces, which is considered as the main achievement of modern physics, of course, has a basic physics, uh, solid background of understanding classical physics to quantum physics. You may ask what is the application of the standard model of particle physics? And as I explained to you, technological application of any theory takes, uh, uh, depending upon the uh, technological developments, it may take a couple of years to couple of decades. And to our surprise, one day we may get uh, different te technological applications of this grand theory which is established in particle physics. So if you look at the technological spin-offs, research is often limited by technological availability, right? Because unless I have a good instrument in the laboratory, nowadays coming up with a discovery is becoming difficult. To make progress in fundamental science, we of course need new instruments. New technologies will depend on fundamental research, and fundamental research will go in a symbiotic way with technological developments. If Raman uh, discovery or Raman effect was not discovered in the laboratory using simple uh, laboratory tabletop experiments, nowadays the Raman uh, spectroscopy machine, what you see having immense biological applications and your uh, material science applications, that is not possible. So in that way, understanding of basic physics or basic science is important if you want to make a leap in uh, technology. So the lesson here is a symbiotic approach of science and technology going hand in hand is important if you want to progress as a country. And uh, if you look at the uh, technological development, I remind you Gordon uh, Moore who passed away a couple of uh, weeks back, he predicted in 1965, so my contemporaries are uh, older to me, they have seen this kind of vacuum tube transistors used in uh, big radio sets. So nowadays this miniaturization of uh, IC circuits, which is, you know, this looks like this, the typical transistor. This was predicted in 1965 that slowly miniaturization happen, uh, will happen in a way that will uh, have uh, more than 2 billion transistors inside a iPhone, which can actually fit to my pocket. And, uh, uh, you know, my contemporaries like uh, uh, Dr. Jogesh Kumar, so they can actually um, uh, remind their school days or uh, in, in fact, the UP, UP school days where we have seen the transistors inside radio sets like this. So if you think of this kind of transistors of uh, 2 billion, we cannot have a uh, cell phone which can come in my pocket. So this kind of technological advancements have happened with time. And uh, then, you know, thanks to our director, Professor Joshi. So yesterday he gave me a similar technological development plot, which was given almost in 1974 before my birth, where uh, the engineer in uh, uh, Taniguchi gave the car, which is called Taniguchi Corps. So this predicts that uh, if you shift the precision of 
each decimal, for example, your mechanical engineering machining uh, precision to uh, go forward in one decimal place or to make the measurements more precise, it may take 20 years. So you see, even if we are moving in a faster rate in technological advancements, so bringing down the precision level is a challenge always both technologically and to associated science. <clears throat> so people like uh, Richard Feynman also could foresee in 1959 that there is plenty of room at the bottom, an invitation to enter a new field of physics. So that time also the present day nanotechnology was foreseen that lots of physics domains can open up if we go to lower in dimension. So now uh, you will be surprised to know that our nature operates in a much bigger land scale. For example, if you look at the, uh, the you know, starting from the radius uh, of observable universe, if you go to the particle physics, small uh, dimension objects, essentially you use starting from radio telescopes to high energy accelerators like Large Hadron Collider sitting at CERN, which I'll be discussing today. So to probe the lower dimensions, uh, you need big accelerators, whereas for uh, larger dimensions, you need uh, different kind of uh, observatories or telescopes. And uh, nature operates almost uh, at the level of 10 to the power 60 order of magnitude, whereas our human perception index lies at the level of 10 to the power 10. So we need to use advanced uh, instruments uh, to uh, know the beauty of uh, nature. That is what as scientists we have been doing. And uh, actually nature in a full glory, if you have a look, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which is actually 150 meters underground and 27 kilometers circular collider. So it has a uh, high precision uh, of point mm per kilometer while digging the tunnel. So that is a beauty of the engineering component of uh, doing science. And at the other end, if you look at the Hubble telescopes, which are actually around 50 square meter, and they can uh, they are actually um, at uh, 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So at one end, to know the astronomical objects, we need, need smaller detectors, and they are actually in the uh, 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 space. Whereas if you go to subatomic particles, they need uh, bigger detectors and bigger accelerators and sometimes they are housed underground. So now taking you a little uh, to the uh, uh, school level. So if you ask atoms, the fundamental building block of matter. <clears throat> so the building blocks of matter are atoms. And we ask uh, questions as a curious mind, atoms are very small and how small they are. So more than millions of atoms can stack together. They can make it uh, rarely to a thickness of a paper. Then the question is in daily life in the classical domain, can we ignore them as the size is very insignificant? And my answer would be no, because they govern the properties of the matter. And unless we understand the properties of matter, we cannot actually deal with the present day technologies. So through modern day technologies, one can actually take a picture of atom. Okay, and we can really see uh, the atoms in the laboratory. And we have a very good understanding of the atomic model. I will take you a little inside that. So let me start with uh, uh, the right light to see the objects. So if you see the way we have read in our classroom, the optic scores, for example, to see an object. So I use a, a visible light and the light is described by the corresponding wavelength lambda. And to generate this light, I use a lamp and the scattered light comes to my eyes and I, I see that. So if I ask you, what is the fundamental principle on which this vision works? Simply, my uh, lambda, uh, the light wavelength, has to be less than or equal to the object size d. So that is the fundamental principle which governs the vision. Similarly, I can actually go to bigger accelerators where they can generate particles, and those are those could be considered as waves, and that wave lambda will be proportional to energy. For example, if I am at a high energy domain, I produce lower wavelength. And using this lower wavelength, 
uh, I can see the objects which are so in subatomic scale and the scattered lights instead of getting detected by our eyes, this can be detected by different advanced detectors in the laboratory. Okay. So essentially the optics principle can be utilized in the modern day accelerators to probe subatomic universe. So that is the take home message. So now using the same principle, if you go to any of the laboratories, either in IUSC or in uh, IIT Indore, in any advanced uh, uh, or Delhi University, so any uh, institution of higher learning, you will find there are transmission electron microscopes where exactly using this lambda is equal to h over p, using this principle, we can see the atomic structure, okay? So that means nowadays technology helps us in seeing inside of the atoms. So what makes the atoms of one element different from the atom of another element? And atoms are the invisible as proposed by Dalton in his theory of atoms. If you look at the dictionary, the Greek word atomos, from which the word atom is derived, so it says it is indivisible. So at the end of 19th century, we are able to reveal the structure of atom and as well as uh, uh, to explain its properties. So one first indication from our daily life comes to establish the fact that atoms are not indivisible is from the study of static electricity in the winter. If you touch, you know, um, your car door or, you know, um, the handles uh, of the conducting uh, doors, so you will find that we get static uh, shock. So when somebody comb the hair, does the comb then attract small pieces of paper? So we have seen this in the laboratory, this kind of uh, images are available in uh, uh, internet. So you will find that this uh, static electricity actually talked about the composition of atom to start with and people started doing experiments and atom was perceived as uh, divisible and it consists of charged particles to start with. But as a whole, atom is uh, charge neutral. So then comes the 1897 cathode ray experiment of J.J. Thompson. I'll just brush upon uh, your memory and go to the little advanced stage. So you will find in 1987 when uh, J.J. Thompson in Cavendish laboratory performed this experiment using cathode ray tube. So what he found is this invisible particles which are not visible to our naked eyes, this could be seen using the fluorescent screen like zinc sulfide screen. And the deflection in the magnetic field essentially tells that these are charged particles. And changing this cathode uh, plates by different uh, materials. So J.J. Thompson could show that uh, electron is the universal carrier of uh, negative electricity. And it is present in all the materials. So by this, so looking into atom and coming up with the experimental uh, detection of electron in the laboratory and proving the fact, more importantly, that it is an it is a universal constituent of matter. He received or he was awarded 19606 Nobel Prize in Physics. So now the story of proton is more interesting after this cathode ray. You see, that time technology was not that advanced to maintain the uh, pressure inside or to make uh, the tube vacuum or maintain the pressure was not easy. And many people parallelly were doing experiments. And uh, E. Goldstein, the German physicist, he was one of them. And if you look into Ron Gain's uh, discovery of X-rays, that is also equally important. You will find how accidental that was. So recently I visited Ron Gain's laboratory in Uzburg University in Germany. I find it is very fascinating. So that discussion, I am not bringing it uh, on board here, but many people in that time were performing experiments on uh, cathode ray tubes. So Goldstein started seeing, uh, he made extensive study of discharge tubes and electricity was passed in a discharge tube at very high voltage and through a gas at low pressure. Important thing is, you know, Goldstein was performing the experiment in a, uh, a tube with gas. So this has to be kept in mind. This in, is in contrast with uh, what Thomson was doing. Thomson's tube was evacuated tube. So now the beauty of this experiment is, 
since you have gas inside and if you have a charged particle passing through the gas it will ionize the gas so what you start seeing inside the tube or as a uh, observation is essentially the ions produced because of the presence of gas so this is in contrast to what thomson's experiment came up with electron discovery so then this uh, uh, proton was discovered to be massive almost 1840 times massive than electron and the same charge as uh, electron in the sense the opposite charge but amount is same and the number of protons in an atom was a defining property of the atomic uh, element or the atomic number so parallelly another uh, renowned experimentalist called uh, ernest rutherford so he also proved that hydrogen nucleus is, is present in all the nuclei so a result which is usually described as the discovery of protons but the story is not stopping there the first reported nuclear reaction by rutherford was bombarding alpha particles on uh, nitrogen target and uh, he could perform this uh, uh, reaction and proton was uh, a you know by product initially rutherford thought that uh, it is the modern proton is uh, in this equation is the hydrogen ion and proud gave the hypothesis that hydrogen was the building block of all elements but this is the way science has got to development and the word proton meaning in greek is fast so this name was also given to hydrogen nucleus by rutherford and uh, initially that was also termed as proton and because of this parallel developments in the discovery of proton essentially no timeline was given for the proton discovery unlike electron and rutherford is termed as uh, the father of nuclear physics because of the first nuclear interactions and of course he discovered uh, the nucleus through the you know alpha scattering experiment which i'll be discussing so the thomson's atomic model then was uh, established with uh, a spherical cloud of uh, positive charge and this negatively charged electrons which were discovered those are actually embedded inside and thanks to the ncert book for the class uh, students uh, the school students so it's beautifully it is shown with a watermelon so uh, this uh, seeds are actually electrons embedded inside this bulk of uh, you know redis material so that is a beautiful way of visualizing thomson's experiment and what is important to show here thomson was the director of cavendish laboratory at the age of 35 and most importantly his research assistants seven of his research assistants got nobel prize so that laboratory cavendish laboratory was very famous in coming up with seven nobel laureates Uh, working in that laboratory so rutherford in 1908 essentially ruled out thomson's established model by alpha scattering and uh, we know uh, the way we understand uh, the nuclear structure now so we have neutrons and protons or a positively uh, charged object uh, centered at the you know at the center and this electrons are revolving this is what was the rutherford's model on top of thomson's plum pudding model and uh, uh, in 1908 nobel prize in chemistry was given to uh, rutherford and uh, in uh, uh, his uh, nobel uh, lecture rutherford told that i have dealt with many transformations different transformations and with various periods of time but the quickest that i have made was my own transformation in one moment from a physicist to a chemist because he is a physicist but the discovery gave a nobel prize in chemistry that is a very good story on that so i will not tell you because of time constraints but the biggest transformation which happened to rutherford himself was getting nobel prize in chemistry rather than in physics then the journey to the discovery of a neutron started with the discovery of isotopes and we know isotopes means atoms of an element with same place in the periodic table that means the proton number is same and uh, mass is different and then question was you know how mass is becoming different f sodi in 1921 got nobel prize in chemistry for discovery of isotopes then this was not understood from the then nuclear model of proton electron because neutron was not discovered and at that time i should remind you that this radioactivity was discovered in 1980 uh, 19 uh, 1896 
by the French scientist uh, Henri Becquerel, and while working with plus, uh, phosphorescent materials. And in 1998, Rutherford at Cavendish Laboratory discovered alpha and beta rays. Paul Villard in around 1900, he discovered gamma rays. So whatever was known as subatomic particles during that time was essentially limited to electrons, gamma rays, alpha particles, beta rays. And it was not known to us, and proton was of course discovered, and it was not known to us what is uh, the existence, if there is existence of neutron, or what makes this mass difference where the two elements are sitting in the same place in the periodic table where masses are same. So these radiations had also been identified as coming from the atoms and later used in the scattering experiments to probe the interior of atoms. Exactly the similar way um, our uh, CERN laboratory in Europe is also uh, doing experiments that I will uh, discuss. And in 1932, the famous experiment of uh, James Chadwick, a British scientist in, uh, who got actually Nobel Prize of 1935 in physics. So he performed the similar experiment. A polonium radioactive source was taken, which was giving alpha particles. It was getting bombarded on beryllium target. And an unknown radiation was going and hitting paraffin wax. Then protons were detected. So what was seen is this unknown radiation was charge neutral, not affected by magnetic field. And it is more penetrating than the gamma rays, because gamma ray was the only particle which was known by that time, which is charge neutral. So it is more penetrating than the gamma rays. And Chadwick explained there may be a elastic scattering happening in the way I saw here. It is essentially a billiard ball scattering. You put you know, push a billiard ball and the complete momentum transfer happens to a object which is a similar mass. Then you know this comes to a rest the way it is shown here. And exactly similar way it is happening uh, in this interaction, uh, after this unknown radiation is hitting paraffin wa wax, proton is getting uh, out and this is getting absorbed here or staying at rest. So this unknown radiation must carry a mass which is comparable to proton. And with this, in 1932, so he discovered neutron, the you know chargeless uh, particle sitting inside the nucleus. And in 1932, the year was uh, termed as a marvelous year. And, uh, you know, in French, it is Anos Mirabilis. And uh, in the Cavendish laboratory, many new discoveries came up. So, for example, in the same year, neutron was discovered, artificial nuclear disintegration by Krakut and uh, Walton particle accelerators. So that also happened where a lithium um, atom was actually disintegrated through the bombardment of proton, and this happened through uh, accelerator. So in artificial way, we could break atoms. So that kind of experiment started. Positron by Anderson was also discovered in cosmic rays on the same year. So now what is important to excite the school students is J.J. Thompson won Nobel Prize in 1906, when he showed new by electron is a particle. His son got Nobel Prize in 1937, showing that electron is a wave. And in the Cavendish laboratory, as you can see, Chadwick, discoverer of a neutron, was a student of Rutherford. And Rutherford worked with Thompson. Okay. And he was a student of Thompson. So you see the legacy of the generations of people continuing uh, doing uh, path breaking discoveries. So, which happened mostly in the Cavendish laboratory. So then the proton neutron model of nucleus and the birth of quantum mechanics, all these things happened. We had slowly started understanding the simplest atom or element, which is hydrogen. And we know we have established theory of hydrogen, then neutron and all that. So then the structure of protons, we started knowing again, asking the curious question, can we see inside the protons? So this happened when we came up with a high energy accelerators. We threw electrons on or bombarded electrons on protons, and we tried to see the complex structure, internal structure of proton. So slowly we came to know that uh, these electrons are getting reflected from three bombs, uh, bombs inside the protons. Those are termed as the constituent quarks, which is U, U, and D. Then the journey from electrons to quarks started in a different uh, particle accelerators. 
and we started understanding the structure of proton and neutron. So proton consisting of UUD quarks and neutron consisting of UDD quarks. And the whole governing principle was essentially this optics principle or later on this lambda is equal to H over P, the famous equation of uh, Louis de Bogli for which he got Nobel Prize. So now then, you know, we established different families of quarks like U, D, charm, strange, top and bottom. The lepton family has also uh, discovered and uh, we have a Jew of elementary particles later on, the subatomic particles, and they have got many technological applications which I will discuss. So as of today, if you look at elementary particles, it is known that these are quark families, these are lepton families, and we have a clear understanding of atom starting from 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter to 10 to the power 10 uh, minus 16 centimeter or 10 to the power minus 18 centimeter uh, length scale starting from atoms to quarks and gluons as the constituent of uh, protons. So now we have an established theory of hydrogen atom and it's governed by quantum electrodynamics. As you know, the electron is revolving uh, inside, uh, inside the atom in this way. And if I want to separate uh, an electron from uh, the atom, it is simple. We know that 13.6 electron volt can be pumped in and this ionization can happen. It is quite well understood through the theory of quantum electrodynamics. If you go to this uh, strong interaction length scale, where these quarks and gluons are confined inside the protons, it is a case, okay, hadronic case. If I try to separate them, what will happen is, so slowly uh, the strong field will grow and uh, quark, anti-quark uh, will be created out of the vacuum because vacuum is considered as having infinite energy. So then the way it will happen is that this proton will have a, a proton is a baryon. And again, the confinement property will stay as it is with a three uh, quarks combining to form a proton. And this anti-quark, which is formed uh, out of vacuum will combine with another quark to form a meson, which is pi zero kind of meson. So the message is unlike QED, quantum electrodynamics, in the strong interaction, we cannot separate these quarks and gluons. Then the question is, can we find free quarks? The asymptotic freedom nature of the strong interaction was proposed or theorized by David Gross, Wilczek and Polizer in 1973, and they got Nobel Prize in the year 2004. And later on, uh, the scientists like Kabibo and Parisi, they talked about asymptotic QCD and deconfinement transition. So then taking the QCD uh, predictions in the laboratory, we started uh, visualizing that under extreme conditions of temperature and energy densities, a normal nuclear matter can undergo to a phase transition to a quark gluon plasma. And quark gluon plasma will be essentially a decaged state of hadrons, where this uh, fundamental particles called gluons and uh, quarks can roam over beyond the boundaries of hadrons. So we started doing experiments to form this, and uh, maybe I will omit this. This is a low energy nuclear physics where uh, one particle collides with another particle, and again, in the final state, we have two particles. Our relativistic collisions are actually multi-particle final state. We break uh, the target and produce many particles in the final state. So I will not go to the details of this because this will take away the time. And uh, every day basis, we deal with inelastic particle producing explosive collisions. And this is a fixed target collision, as you can see for simplicity, the severity of the damage is less. Whereas if you see on the right hand side, so damage is more and we want more damage on you know, this uh, atomic collision level so that we can reveal the constituents of matter by studying the debris. And kinematically on uh, the back of the envelope calculation, one can show more energy is available in this kind of collider experiments compared to the fixed target experiments. So this is the way on the everyday basis we make collisions and in the laboratory here, this picture is essentially a net nucleus getting collided uh, in the relativistic velocity with its counterpart. And what we see is a multitude of particles coming out and uh, um, the space time evolution of this kind of nuclear collision is depicted in this uh, slide. 
as you can see this spherical uh, nuclei are Lorentz contracted in the longitudinal direction and after the collision there may be a quarkulon plasma formation then they will hadronize to form uh, the hadrons which are protons neutrons and pions and Subsequently, they may freeze out and uh, being detected by our detectors and uh, these uh, particles will be detected by our detectors like different tracks in the detectors. So this is the experiment we perform in the Large Hadron Collider and to guide us, there are very fundamental small and beautiful equations given by Louis de Broglie and later on, you know, um, Einstein giving also same equation, uh, similar uh, concept like uh, I need high energy to probe lower in length scale. And once I have high energies, I can produce multitude of particles in the final state through this famous equation. And again, uh, following Boltzmann's uh, equation, E is equal to KT. You see, all equations are small equations and worthy of Nobel Prize, although this is the only Nobel Prize uh, getting equation. And uh, by this, we can see the L universe and the kind of experiments we are doing, essentially this can take us to the early universe scenario by producing very high temperature and energy density in the laboratory. So question is, how do you do it? Before we do the collision, uh, which I showed you already, we have multitude of particles in the final state. If you go to the particle data book, you will find many subatomic particles. So this is the Jew of subatomic particles, but because of the te technical reasons, we can only see and technological advancements, we can see only these eight particles and their antiparticle counterparts in the detector level. So as Indian community or in the international community, as you can see, this kind of experiment started way back from 1984. And India has started, uh, started participating in many different experiments. Uh, so this is essentially a high end of the nuclear physics experiments with very high energies. That is the reason we do not have the facilities in India. And we participate in the under mega science projects and uh, in CERN and also in the US Brookhaven National Laboratory. So this is the picture of Geneva, Switzerland, where the, the Large Hadron Collider is. This is the picture of the CERN. So given an opportunity, if you are in Switzerland, don't miss uh, of going to the, uh, visit this Large Hadron Collider experiment. So you can see this is the uh, Geneva Airport. The dimension of the airport is comparable. You know, if you compare that, it is quite small compared to the Large Hadron Collider experiment, which is underground. Twenty-seven kilometers uh, is the ring, and we have different big experiments. Out of that, India participates in CMS and Alice experiment. IIT Indore is part of uh, uh, the Alice experiment. And let me show you a quick uh, uh, simulation. So you will find the way a particle acceleration and collision happens. So these are different uh, rings, accelerator rings, where subsequently the particle energy is uh, increased. And why the ring dimension is higher and higher, that is also driven by uh, physics. So now you see the particle is in the injected to the Large Hadron Collider, higher and higher energies using uh, the superconducting magnet. And the cryogenic technologies are now available and you start seeing uh, inside of the proton because energy is sufficient enough and your fundamental equations will guide you for that. And at the end, at uh, dedicatedly you know, placed detectors, so we make collision of this part by uh, protons and heavy ions. And these tracks are detected by our detectors for, you know, the making of these detectors sometimes take 10 years for us. And these are actually the tracks we detect at uh, different detector level. And now I will show you a couple of pictures only so that, you know, you get motivated towards what we are doing at Large Open Collider. So this is again a schematic, as you can see the LHC is actually going or spanning the French and Swiss, both the regions, it is very big. And this is a uh, this is the dimension of the detectors. You can see a person standing here, it's almost six floor building. You may start thinking what is the necessity of having these big detectors for subatomic particles. This is the Alice detector where I work. 
and these are actually uh, some of the uh, tracks you can see uh, event properties you know track density is too much we have many uh, technological challenges in the data analysis so this is the recent picture of uh, alice experiment which has gone through upgradation so this i visited when i was in sorn for a year uh, last year and sorn is also planning for future uh, collider which will be 100 kilometers so i encourage you people to participate in these uh, large scale experiments and thanks to our government for the uh, big support generous support to this kind of mega science activities now india is participating in many mega science activities like the ino some experiments fair experiment in germany the sky india program uh, tmt iter in france and the ligo uh, india which is coming up in maharashtra so this got up, uh, cabinet approval just last week so we have bright future in doing mega science and uh, probing different scales of the nature and uh, before i stop let me show you couple of applications taking another 5 to 10 minutes let me show you some of the applications for example when we started discovering electron electrons description as wave and particle and the mathematical formulation as a classical object through uh, schrodinger wave uh, mechanics gave rise to when uh, uh, relativity came to the picture so uh, dirac came up with the relativistic equation from whom so we came to know that uh, uh, that is the antiparticle of electron which was a complete theory and initially you know that is why being a mathematician british mathematician he is termed as the father of electronics and uh, uh antiparticle was predicted theoretically and positron was the first antiparticle discovered by anderson who got carl anderson who got nobel prize in 1936 and he is the student of robert millikan you may be doing this oil drop experiment in your uh, laboratories and uh, this uh, i'll tell you you know let me skip couple of applications of this antiparticles and how sun has also come up with a uh, anti hydrogen atom Uh, creating anti hydrogen atom by decelerating this uh, um uh, you know uh, different components now and uh, nasa has also uh, planned for anti matter engine to mars so you see the technological advancements the way it is happening and particularly from the point of view of medical imaging so let me show you this uh, positron emission tomography the way it works taking the information of uh, Uh, electron and the antiparticle which is uh, uh, positron so now what happens is this uh, positron emitter taking uh, fluorine 18 which is produced in cyclotrons like we have a medical cyclotron in calcutta so they are actually we can produce this uh, uh, tracers or the radio isotopes they will combine with the electrons and uh, after the annihilation they will give you different gamma rays which can be uh, used to probe uh, Uh, any uh, abnormalities uh, or like tumor formation in the brain and in other places so it has got immense medical imaging and saving life and one of our high energy uh, experimentalist george charpak got nobel prize in 1992 for the discovery of multiwave proportional counter and slowly he moved to medical imaging because these high energy physics detectors have got immense applications in uh, biology biological imaging so one thing which uh, india and thanks to the department of atomic energy which is uh, thinking to you know planning to bring up this uh, hadron therapy centers which was perceived much earlier by uh, then director of fermi lab robert wilson so this was actually coined in 1946 and the first patient in us was treated in 1950 and india is yet to have a hadron therapy center and if you go to any cancer center you will find so many people suffering and i urge to the indian community the policy makers that we should quickly come up with hadron therapy uh, centers and the beauty the physics guideline here is compared to the radiation therapy we it has a spread it can dim, damage the malign cells or the affected cells and the normal cells but if you go to uh, carbon ions or protons in hadron therapy so what will happen is following this brack peak so these particles will deposit their complete energy following you know uh, uh, 
uh, v to the power 4 energy deposition will be proportional to v to the power 4 their velocity fourth power of the velocity so when you try to stop this so they will deposit complete energy so using this Bragg peak method so we can actually come up with a hadron therapy centers in india and uh, we can save many cancer patients so that is what indian da is planning uh, right now and um, then as a byproduct of uh, internet www as you know tim berners lee gave the proposal in 1989 and his boss mike sendel uh, wrote on the proposal that it is big but exciting and later on as you can see so he could come up with uh, tim berners lee could come up with www as a necessity of internet as a necessity of uh, transferring the data produced in uh, LEP, uh, the lab uh, accelerator, which is the precursor of the Large Hadron Collider, to different laboratories, multinational laboratories. So, so let me show you a couple of pictures. He's Tim Berners Lee, who discovered internet. And this is the machine, as you can see, that was used for internet. And if you go to CERN in this building number one in the corridor, this was the uh, Tim Berners Lee office. And I saw you a picture which I took just one month back in front of the office of uh, Tim Berners Lee. And uh, scientific leadership is very important because you see, science should not be patented. That is what I also argue. And as you can see, the then Nobel laureate and certain director general Carlo Rubia took a decision that uh, as a part of scientific discoveries, internet should not be patented. And he told that in the, this uh, uh, certain uh, release of uh, the statement, certain relinquishes all intellectual property rights to this code, internet code, both source and binary form, and permission is granted for anyone to use, duplicate, modify, redistribute. So it's open, you can do anything. And because of that only, as you can see, we have made significant progress in internet technology, internet of things and all that your artificial intelligence, machine learning, so many things are now dependent on uh, internet. And uh, because of this uh, nice scientific uh, uh, decisions at the end, so we have made a good progress in science and technology. Similar is the case of the discovery of electricity, because sometimes, you know, politicians like William Gladstone may not understand as the British Exchequer of Chancellor of Exchequer, the finance minister, they may not understand the relevance of science. That is why Faraday uh, replied that you may tax it, but it is not taxed. And you can see, you can imagine, we do not pay tax to either Faraday or ben Benjamin Franklin or Tim Berners-Lee for the use of electricity and internet. So that will tell you, so how scientific decision-making is important. And um, I just quote uh, 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 Harivik Schaffer, the two times uh, director general of Sean. So he says that uh, this HTTP or WWW is very important. It's the biggest spin off of the collider experiment. Large data sample, huge number of people involved in the experiment, multi country participation, and the need of data access to all. A common goal of doing world class physics at fundamental level. And all this happened because of the WWW. And like electricity, internet is everywhere now. And in COVID days, all of us, we have seen. And, you know, I could not come to your place. I would have enjoyed interacting with you. And uh, thanks to, again, internet that we are talking to each other uh, today. And I stop here by thanking you that, okay, don't give up work for uh, science. And accelerate science and technology will follow up and uh, we'll be in a better shape uh, and we can save human life uh, in many different ways as an application of uh, basic science. Thank you very much for listening to me last one hour. Thank you so much, sir, for your acuity. It is indeed a prestige to listen to your experience and knowledge. We are much obliged, sir, for sharing your insights and for endowing the young learners with your words of perception. Now, the session is open for questions and I would like to take permission from you, sir, to conduct the question answer session. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first question from the participants is, uh, is there any possibility of any particle which is smaller than quarks? Okay. So as we understand, 
you know, if you are talking about possibility, if you go to those days of 19, uh, 1800 century and all that, so that time electron was also not perceived as a fundamental constituent of the atom. So slowly, depending upon the technology and the energy scale in hand, we started seeing the constituents. Till now, the only elementary particle which has stayed as elementary is electron. Proton was also considered that time as elementary, like neutron, and we started seeing the constituent of proton and neutron. So to answer to your question, quark is fundamental like electron as of today. Tomorrow, we do not know if we have much higher in energy, we can probe inside the uh, quark. It may come up as a um, composite object, but as of now, quark is uh, elementary. There is no theory saying that it, there is any substructure of electron uh, uh, quark. And experimentally also, we have not gone up to the level that we can actually see the substructure of quarks. So to answer you, as of today, given the energy in hand and the theory, quark is fundamental. Thank you, sir. The next question is, how these quarks combine together? How quarks combine together? Yeah, so that is a process of hadron formation or hadronization. So you see, in the first phase, if this can be brought together, like, you know, we are producing quark gluon plasma in the laboratory by colliding them, essentially the energy density and temperature is very high. So it is more than 10 to the power five times uh, the core of the sun temperature. So there are different mechanisms of uh, hadronization and coalescence is one of the mechanisms. So if they can be brought together in the phase space, if they are nearby, so they will form the composites like quark, anti-quark combining and forming a meson, and three quarks combining forming a uh, barrier. So this can be, this can only happen in phase space through the mechanisms like uh, coalescence, which is well established now. And uh, there are many theories of explaining hadronization procedure. So maybe, you know, for the school level, it may be a little higher, but you can think of in the phase space if this can be brought together, so they have a tendency of getting attracted by following this strong interaction properties. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question from the participant is, can we detect Big Bang using these accelerators? Can we deduct? Big Bang. Can we uh, do Big Bang using accelerators? Yes, sir. Yeah, so Big Bang is actually uh, the established theory of the formation of uh, the universe. There are many theories which uh, cosmologists can tell us or astrophysicists can tell us, but Big Bang is the more established theory that you know the two heavenly objects they collided and the energy density was too high. Essentially, at the Large Hadron Collider, we are performing many Big Bang collisions per second. You can think of like 10 to the power 11 collisions happening per second and uh, where exactly we say it is a little bang. Okay, so respecting the God making Big Bang, because we are doing as experimentalists, so we term as a little bang, essentially exactly similar way, then we create very high temperature and energy density in the laboratory and uh, study the evolution of the universe the way it might have happened 13.8 billion years back. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question is, till date, we know only six quarks. So is there any possibility of next generation of quarks which we can have from these accelerators? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. It is very pragmatic <laughs> and uh, curious question. So till now, the theory guides us there are three uh, quark generations. So essentially six quarks. And as you can see, the top quark was discovered in 1995 because of uh, this Fermi uh, lab, you know, um, uh, energy availability. And that was actually the last quark to be discovered. And before that, theoretically, it was conjectured much uh, earlier. And uh, till now, standard model says this is six quarks, uh, three generations. Tomorrow, if you can come up with uh, a theory and we prove in the experiment, okay, there are quarks beyond six, possibly true. But as of now, both theory and experiments, they guide uh, to the level that we have six quarks. 
So next question is uh, much more interesting than the previous one. How can our <laughs> college student visit CERN or can contribute to the scientist in such a noble cause? So, sir, can you please okay. guide us? So, so you want to visit CERN? So is it yes. for science or tourism? So that is the first thing. So, so if you are, yeah, if you are going for science, don't miss the tourism. If you are going for tourism, don't miss the science. So I would say, you know, combine both and go to CERN. The ways of going to CERN is CERN has summer internship programs. You can actually look into uh, uh, their website. They have summer internship programs. You apply there and there are many students, Indian students uh, you can find there. And if your uh, institute has a MOU signed with CERN and uh, you can be financially supported, you are most welcome to go to CERN. And at little latter stage, for example, after BTEC or MSc, so you can also apply for one year or two years uh, internship or temporary positions at CERN. So there are many avenues. You can actually look for job at CERN and then you can explore that. And if you are oldy enough, so you can make a private visit to CERN, of course. Uh, Dr. Sau, Dr. Sau, he is the chairperson of Amity International School. Do Dr. Sau, I was hearing you when you are talking about CERN, no? Of many yeah. of our Amity children, they go for internship to CERN. They Wonderful. have, uh, yes, they have, uh, through the competitions. They go yeah. through the competitions. Eh? For yeah. many, many years they go, no? And they have really benefited from this program. Dr. Sau, I am really very, very happy that IAPT have getting, getting given um, um, the chance to host this program. Thank you. So thank you so much. So in fact, if but, you look uh, at uh, 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 NIT but, Durgapur, NIT Durgapur, to my knowledge, they have signed one MOU. Each uh -huh. year, five, 10 students in the summer, they are going for couple of months internship at CERN. Okay, okay. We will also, Kate, we will also plan it out. And yeah. you know, in Amity in M University, we have got many top scientists. You must be knowing Amity University all over. We have got around 12 universities. So, yeah. especially in Amity University, Noida, we have got the top scientists like you. So, aapka jo hai, Amity schools are very innovative. Sir, very creative. Now, Kate, we are working with the Atal Tinkering Lab. Okay. We have got the top Atal Tinkering Labs in Amity International Schools. So you yesterday... are expecting me and I am starting to feel bad because of our department reviews. I could not make it in person to our Amity University or your school. So I was thinking to go today. Huh. But because Sir, we have experts in the department, Aoji, I need to come to Amity International School. Uh, you should come to Amity International Schools. Abhi, Kate Niti Ayog and Agriculture Universe, Agriculture Ministry, they wanted to visit our Atal Tinkering Lab in Amity Saket. Uh, so they were there, they were so impressed by our children, their innovative, their creativeness. So they invited the Agriculture University, no ministry, and Niti Ayog. Unka, they had a program. They're the launch program. So Lalit, Lalit, I'm here, chairperson. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm also here, Divya. Divya is there. So Lalit will tell you how appreciative they were about our Amity children. So Arshav Ji, what do they say? The girl gets a toy, then he opens the toy. The girl gets a doll, then he opens the toy. The girl gets a doll, then he opens the toy. She protects the child and keeps it. But how did you make these girls so innovative? There were so many girls who have done creative programs. Yeah, the girls are more innovative than boys. So let's respect that. Yes, they are very product developing. And equally in Mayuri Hara also. Allah, let me show you, Mr. Chau, what our children have done here. No, I have to come. You have to come. You have to come. You have to come. Sahaj Ji, we have to see that our children are doing a good job. A good job is what they are creating. They are creating something. Where are they coming from? Is it right? Nandiri, call to offline. 
Ma'am, we will invite very soon Professor Sahu as offline in Amity International Mule Vihar. And then I'm missing it actually. I'm not going to that. No, 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 no. You will see that India is so creative. Ho. How creative the children are. हमने कहते हैं मिसेस आओ कहते हैं हमने असुविधा प्रोग्राम स्टार्ट किया था इन 2006 है ना द चिल्ड्रन वर डूइंग रिसर्च अपना प्रोजेक्ट बनाते थे थ्रू रिसर्च एंड द प्रेजेंटेशन उसका हम देख रहे हैं कि दैट इज द आउटकम ऑफ दैट प्रोग्राम जो हमारा हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर का वो वो है ना विचार वो हम साकार कर रहे हैं बहुत सालों से <laughs> many many innovative programs are taken up now by the government and ah. the way you told Tinker Slap. So essentially, yeah. we are also coming up Atta, with those ideas. Sir, our, our chairperson is very passionate. So she encourages every child. So jo Vasudha aapko bata rahi hai na, chota sa project shuru hota hai, usse patent mil jate hai bachcho ko. That's how they're working towards it. And the copyright Alex or research copyright to Ajata. Or they do research, research also, and they write publish in the mag. Kyoki Hamunko support our year to put students at research publication rounds up five papers that you have published in international journals here. Absolutely. सभी सभी को करें नहीं नहीं कम्स फिजिकली तो ये जो हम बच्चों को अब कर रहे मैं तो 99 से बच्चों के साथ लगी हुई हूं कि दे बिकम क्रिएटिव इनोवेटिव और उसका yeah. फल अब मुझे अब मिल रहा है उसका और फिर मुझे अच्छा सुन के लगता है कि हमारे प्रधानमंत्री का भी विचार वैसे ही है तो इट इज गोइंग टू हैपन तो साहब जी आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल आप ऑनलाइन पर भी आए आपने बच्चों को इतना अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन दिखाया तो दे मस्ट बी हाईली मोटिवेटेड Thank you. And Thank you. I to you. Thank 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 you. If I saw the physics of quadrillion plasma, that may go here on the students, right? So better, you know, let's, uh, you know, make one kind of encouragement so that they can do something. And बिल्कुल yeah. बिल्कुल और इसमें ना जैसे मैं रोजाना हम लोग यजुर्वेद पढ़ते हम वेद पढ़ते हैं तो वेदों में तो वहां पे भी लिखा है अरे साइंस की बातें कर रहे हैं आपको बातें कर रहे हैं कि देट से अबाउट कि आप बाहर जाइए एक्सपोजर के आइए तो हम ऐसी चीज जो हमारे हमारे वेदों में हमारे पुराने जो साइंस उन, उन्होंने जो बताया है वो हम बच्चों तक कैसे लाएं yeah, since you have talked about Veda and it is a national forum, so I must tell you this Veda and Upanishads, they helped uh, Schrodinger to come up with this uh, electron being a wave. Okay, because you see, if you look at uh, uh, the history of science, so what happened is electron was discovered as a particle by Thomson. And till you know, Thompson's son came up uh, proving experimentally it is uh, a wave in between Louis de Broglie. So he had this duality equation lambda is equal to h over p. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful story. De Broglie told mm -hmm. that uh, this is my discovery, it is a theoretical one. Mm -hmm. And his thesis supervisor mm -hmm. was Langevin. Langevin didn't accept mm -hmm. the thesis. So Lajib had told that mm. if you are uh, keen on your discovery, I will send your thesis to Einstein. If Einstein is rejecting, it is rejected. Okay. And since uh, 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 De Broglie was a French prince, 
So the supervisor was forced to send to Einstein. Einstein mm -hmm. accepted his thesis. Debugly got Nobel Prize mm -hmm. for the thesis. And mm -hmm. that's Schrodinger was waiting there. Yeah. I feel अभी लग रहा है क्योंकि हमारे prime minister पूरे लगे हुए scientists लगे हुए हैं तो some changes are going to come definitely definitely so as a country we should be proud of you know the way things are moving both science and everything innovation we are in a good hand and things are moving really in a good way नहीं नहीं but nice meeting you we are proud of you India thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am thank you sir sir Thank, Thank you, you ma'am, for joining us and giving your words. And uh, <laughs> you have appreciated so much and also excited Professor Sahu so much. So he will definitely uh, visit very soon. Yes, sir. Again, I wish you all the best. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank फिर नव द पीपल लाइक यू द साइंटिस्ट लाइक यू हमारे बच्चों से बात करेंगे तो इट विल मेक अ बिग डिफरेंस सो थैंक यू सो मच दिस इज ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ योर लीडरशिप थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक यू थैंक यू आवर नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट आलू वालिया सर इज विद अस एंड ही वांटेड टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन आई थिंक सर यस सर ओवर टू यू आलू वालिया सर एम आई ऑडिबल एम आई ऑडिबल या या नमस्ते नमस्ते आलू वालिया नमस्कार नमस्कार प्रोफेसर साहू थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग पार्ट ऑफ दिस एनुअल इवेंट ऑफ आईएपीटी रीजनल काउंसिल वन डेडिकेटेड टू वन ऑफ अवर वेरी वेरी डेडिकेटेड मेंबर हु रियली लेड अस इन डूइंग एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एंड टेकिंग देम टू द चिल्ड्रन आई एम ग्रेटफुल दैट यू हैव paid with your lecture a tribute to professor uh, ved ratna ji who was working in ncert and i had a, a very personal relationship with him and i wish uh, if we had more people like uh, him also and the way you presented uh, your talk i think it's a it's a wonderful communication uh, which you have made uh, through the platform of mit and iept i think that's just great and uh, we we hope that we will really uh, have we having more opportunities of uh, from you uh, targeted to different audiences which we have in iept like uh, college students and university students uh, uh, also because we have a very big uh, uh, membership uh, uh, you know number uh, going to about 10000 members and i think uh, this uh, uh, internet as you said it has emerged from sun itself i remember one of his quotations you know tim berner lee was asked that uh, is uh, internet a network of computers and he you know said no no it is not a network of computers it is a network of human beings and i think that is what has proved right uh, yeah. today in particularly pandemic has taught us uh, in this uh, in that adversity also there there are good things which may happen we would have yeah. taken another 10 years to reach this stage where we have reached that stage uh, in just two years and we were not cut off from our students uh, also uh, you really provided a very interesting mix of uh, physics and history of physics that was really great <laughs> i think you have worked very hard in making this presentation must have spent uh, a lot of time in uh, digging things and uh, bringing them to a level where children would not only enjoy they would get glued to the presentation itself and we are going to have this presentation on our uh, channel also uh, because this is a very precious memory which we are going to have Uh, with you uh, there sure, is another sure. thing which i wish to really mention is this that iept wishes you know to have some kind of a mou with cern uh, we you know that we conduct uh, one of the biggest uh, standard examinations in the country at class 11 and 12 level and we would like that those students who come from uh, that competition 
all are not able to go to participate in say physics olympiad or asian physics olympiad but there are some you know more than 35 students whom we shortlist are as good as those physics olympiads uh, students also can we really think of you know having some kind of a uh, collaboration with sun so that sun can provide them some internships to visit uh, geneva uh, uh, under uh, some kind of a mou with uh, iept i think we would love to do that and i think you have made me think of that opportunity plus uh, there is uh, one uh, uh, request which i want to make to the chairperson of met ma'am that ma'am you should really bring all these things out to those students in the country who do not have that kind of a uh, luxury to you know indulge in these things this is very very important and if you can really uh, think iept can facilitate that in bringing students from remote areas to stay with your students for say five or six days and let us have uh, this kind of an internship between our school students and the met school students i think i would love to uh, see that also you know uh, coming up atal tinkering lab you are saying people are writing papers people are writing uh, getting patents they are also getting copyrights i think uh, we need to really tell other students also who may not be having such a privilege to uh, be in met but they are as good as uh, students anywhere so yeah. if uh, that can be done i would request uh, rc1 president and secretary yogesh ji uh, uh, to really uh, go ahead with this uh, kind of a program prasad sahu we would like you to be part of our uh, you know uh, fraternity i don't know whether you are an iept member or not if you are not i would request that you please become iept member also uh, we have a web portal i will request yogesh ji to sh uh, share with you uh, how you can become a member uh, we are looking forward to people like you maybe we would love to have a separate interview also with you where we will sit down and you will be iept presence guest for that interview itself i think uh, that is also what is there in my mind uh, yeah, i am really sure. delighted to be part of this uh, program uh, and i am very very happy congratulations yeah, to uh, rc1 for uh, this uh, initiative great initiative rc1 is doing very well uh to tell you very frankly rc1 is uh, uh, one of the leading regional councils of the country who are setting standards and raising bars also i think uh, that is what uh, is my uh, you know take from them in the last one and a quarter year since i took over as president of uh, iept so thank you once again from uh, iept and hope to see you again and again with us <laughs> thank you thank, thank you. you very much and uh, it will be a pleasure to be a member of iept in fact many of my friends they have suggested me but i could not pay attention after listening to you so maybe if jogesh is sending the link today so this evening i can be the member absolutely oh, no sure, sure sir welcome, welcome. and uh, coming to the iept moi with sun so maybe uh, who can be the contact person from iept So, so if we have call, so then uh, we both uh, can work together because yeah. so has many um, outreach programs and yeah. they essentially open the laboratory in the summer time which is starting from april may for two months plus they open the laboratory for the school kids so yeah. if we can actually i can negotiate with them what best could be done for our selected innovative students from iept so essentially yes. you have made a very good suggestion i should take it forward so i just need the contact person from iept then i will mm -hmm. make you know a bridge between sir me and you so then yes. we will take it forward so essentially yes. that will be a way forward uh, on iept activities yeah yes sir yeah. and we yeah. will uh, let you know uh, who will be the contact person and sure. we want to move ahead in that direction once again i am grateful <laughs> so that will be my small contribution to iept oh, yes 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 thank yes thank you thank you, thank you.
and yes sir it's it's a pleasure uh, it's my pleasure to be in touch with professor sahu and soon he will be the member of iept i hope and sir we will take your services don't worry <laughs> we are privileged to take your services as alu alia sir said and professor sahu yeah so thank you so much sir for sparing your valuable time and enlightening our physical as well as virtual audience with your insightful lecture without any doubt sir well. the lecture was so lucid so innovative and so informative yes sir uh, because of the paucity of time i have i i am not able to take all the questions but uh, sir can you please share your presentation with us either sure. me yogesh or yeah. seema ma'am yeah, so yeah. that we can share with the audience thank sure. you so much sir yeah. now uh, it's again my uh, pleasure to give the hearty vote of thanks to you officially once a great man whispered learn everything you can any time you can from anyone you can then a time will come when you will cherish the knowledge you gave today i take the opportunity to put all my gratitude into words on behalf of iept rc1 amity international school mayur vihar and niti ayo it's my immense pleasure to present my hearty vote of thanks to our eminent speaker professor ragunath sahu for accepting our invitation and taking out his precious time to deliver such a wonderful and informative talk it has been quite motivating and encouraging for the participants as well thank you sir for sharing your spectrum of knowledge in a very lucid way the journey is never ending there is always going to be growth improvement adversity you just have to take it all and it do what's right continue to grow continue to live in the moment thank you sir thank you so much thank you so i can take a leave now yes sir and yes, we sir. will I... definitely have the privilege to invite you once again uh, yes, physically sir. so any time and uh, i look forward to a physical visit as soon as possible yeah. it will be a yeah, pleasure and as as yeah. sir said we will share the details for the membership of iept by the evening Sure. and uh, if in case you have any difficulty you may either contact uh, alu alia sir or us sure sure okay then thank you so much sir for your uh, precious time uh, to us and uh, in future definitely we will contact you uh, thank you so much yeah thank you thank you yeah. Right, and as I can show you, this was built here, starting from this when it was 1986, August 1986, the tower came, the structure, December 1987, and nowadays what you see got commissioned in 1989. So this is one accelerator which you can always, which is it is a new, it is for you, and it is maximally useful. So if you pass by that area. You will see this tower. Inside this tower, if you enter into it, you will find whatever I showed in that schematic. There is a iron source. There is a injector magnet. The puncher is there. Terminal is there. Negative arm is sent to thread this. Then the terminal potential accelerates these ions, and then these ions enter into basement where variety of such facilities, beam lines are there. 
and you can use any current then from hydrogen to gold this kind of electricity is available you can get currents from 5 to 50 pna energy from 30 to 50 megahertz and then these are some of the insights with when you come and showing you to make you interested so that whenever you come you would like to see what, what are those things how these uh, inside exhibiting uh, a potential rings are there in the background and how this functions how this uh, negative ion source works and to, to get it to a large number of uh, people I cannot change every time that today you require gold tomorrow somebody comes that I require uh, silver or uh, something else silicon so this is a kind of snakes multi method so whenever kind of requirement is there I change I rotate the cathode I use this cathode and then the peel is given so this is the top, the tower which you have. Here the source is sitting and this source is giving you the to this printing magnet and this letters into the So this is a uh, magnet which is adding voltage How much uh, terminal potential? Suppose my terminal potential is 15 million volt and I am accelerating silicon charge state is plus 7 how much EVM will be there potential gain will be there so typically 120 you can what can be achieved if you have silicon 7 plus so we calculate how much energy is required which ion species you are requiring which charge state you are interested in accordingly whole uh, set of people they will let you know and how you are going to conduct your experiment. So, DC accelerator's highest voltage which we can go, that is 20 mega volt. Beyond that, the problem is this. The, the insulated gas, which when you come to us, you find force in five cylinders are there in this. SF6 is kept. So, SF6 is inserted into that column where the accelerator takes place. And whenever there is a maintenance, we take the gas down. Then we enter into that tank as we collect it, and again that gas is pushed it back to the tank. But the problem is that, that it can only be this tank that terminal potential is 20 million million. So 20 million volt means you will start with noticing different kind of discharges. And that discharge will not allow you to go beyond 20 million. And because of that, <coughs> and then again going up vertical. You cannot go and see the area where we live is a funnel where aircraft starts landing. The international airport is there. So you cannot build a tower like Kuch Khalifa where you are putting your source on top and then you are accelerating. So the limitation is that this kind of accelerator is limited to a certain energy. I told about uh, the other, this is called terminal potential. Now, if you wish to display, nobody asks me how you are going to shift uh, the charge of particles to different beam areas. So, what we do, we use magnetic field. So, magnetic field, then they are subjected. There is a side wave force which acts, and because of that, the accelerated charge is starting to be inside the base. And accordingly, you can clear your. Area where you are interested. So that is a simple concept which uh, I, I would like to explain here. If you have two pole pieces, north south here, and then magnetic field direction is in this direction, current is going, current means the charged particles are moving in this direction, the deflection will be this. So that is what carefully done using this uh, law of limits left and the magnetic field is only used to steer, to guide the charged particles that have been accelerated with the help of this. So, other important things. Again, I am not going to talk about this, but other important thing which we are going to talk about is second kind of accelerator that is not linear one, DC accelerator, is now accelerated cyclotron. In cyclotron, Lawrence, 
He put the two deep, deep, deep in his circuit, his deep inside of the sun. One is a negative potential, another one is positive. And the source is sitting here, and both of them are connected to varying electric. So, whenever a charge particle enters, is produced here, it experiences the potential difference which is there in between these two, the separation of two these. Gets accelerated. The moment it enters into the magnetic field, this magnetic field is with this uh, T. This magnetic field is like this. So the side wave force will act and it will guide it, the charged particle in, into a circular field, circular uh, path. The moment it comes here after moving from this to this here, again the conditions are favorable, it gets accelerated. Velocity is increased, it goes in a bigger radius of circle and it keeps on moving till it some energy that is required by us. So, this was uh, one such a schematic of a cyclotron, and in 1939, Lawrence got Nobel Prize for this. So, there are problems also with this, and there are many surprises. And these surprises was one in which uh, he, he thought that there is no field inside the leaves. So he used grids at the edges and he thought that uh, uh, what happens if the grids are removed. There was again a surprise that resonance is still worked and he got an increase of 100 times more. So you have to expect. Uh, Explain this because the time is not there. I am not going to go into details. The second surprise was, you know, there is a magnetic field which is acting, and then you see the edge effect here, the magnetic field directions here, the curved field lines they produce magnetic magnetic force focusing, so they prevent the particles that are there to fly off top of the water. So they try it uh, some kind of shimming here. So that the magnetic field can be made uniform and the intense beam is only in the strongest field in the center, but again they form a surprise. So while doing experiments, there are many surprises also which give you some idea how you have missed something or which uh, gives you some learning experiences. So that is one such example. Taking to the Indian exam experience. This uh, cyclotron, we have two places where this cyclotron is there in Kolkata. You might have heard about Dr. Vignath He was the person who explained the solar spectra with the simple furnace which he had at Allahabad. And uh, he had a dream that he will bring to uh, one such a cyclotron. He got a uh, gift from Varavdi Chattan, 60,000, and Calcutta used to give 70,000. So, that when it should scale, because of that it failed. But at the end, this uh, cyclotron facility at ECC is functioning. In Chandigarh, we have another facility, and uh, being at IOSC, we need to help ensure that this facility, at least the USC facility, are operational. So, the problem which I mentioned about the classical accelerators. Classical accelerators have got the limitation that you cannot go beyond a certain terminal potential, you cannot go beyond a velocity which is uh, approaching to relative strict velocity. So how to handle this kind of thing? So these are two some problems like when the cyclotron is working, so there is a problem of resonance. The moment it goes and completes a bigger circuit, the mass is increased because of relativistic effect. But when it enters to that uh, G space, it is out of it. So instead of acceleration, it, it starts decelerating. So that means it, it poses a kind of uh, limit that you cannot go beyond that. And why it is? Because it, we explained that uh, you cannot go beyond the speed of you cannot approach the speed of that. How to counter this? So we have now different kind of thing, which is called synchrotron storage ring. We also have this kind of facility. I will stop here to make the questions. Go ahead, many such things are, are there, RF accelerators, 
and we have seen that which is based on RF and simulations. And I told you that we have got the facility where we can do for superconducting cavities, water wave resonators, which we fabricate here in India. And we have got self reliance in that. So I will stop here. If you want. Beyond that, I will come next time. <coughs> if you have any interest, I invite you to come to my place where we will explain, or I will come again to give you specifically the idea about our effects. Sir, indeed your words have inspired us a lot. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your valuable time and enlightening our audience with the word of perception. Now the session is open for the question and answer. And I request participants to please kindly raise your hand one by one so that we can take the questions. Yes, sir. So, after the reaction to the accelerator, the particles come out. Do you have any provision for measurement of the cross section of those uh, particles? Yes, sir. we have got a full range of uh, different kind of detectors. Okay. For example, if we wish to go for gamma, it's a very general range. Okay. Or, for example, the equation model, it gives you an idea that if suppose magic number 2, 8, 20, 20, 50, 80, 126, that is the number again number of proton and number of neutrons. The shell will be closed and the nuclear nucleus will be remarkably stable. So what we do, we remove nucleon, nucleon means either neutron or proton. See what is the shape of the nucleus. What kind of gamma excitation takes place? What kind of gamma uh, ray comes out of that? So that is a kind of enclosure which is which we call uh, Indian National Gamma Ray and on 27th I am going to have one workshop on 17th, 17th yes. this Monday and uh, the, the idea was that we cannot have all the detectors at one place so because of that we call it Indian National so some of the detectors they come from uh, ECC Kolkata, some of them they come from EI, EI Park and that is populated so when we bombard the target we look at what is happening, what is this, and we generate a lot of statistics because some of the phenomena is very short term. You cannot notice. So, whatever is noticed, what is the cross section, how you got the, like a, a form, the, the way the conjecture says that the compound nucleus is first form, then the like, DP is a different kind of channel, which channel is more preferable because all the range of experiments may be performed. And the evaporation residue will be and you can make the cross section. The whole range of experimentation to come. Sir, uh, I asked with this thing because, because uh, in some reactions, say alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, uh, all will be coming together. You can, uh, do you measure the cross section of, uh, of uh, all the particles simultaneously? Or, uh, simultaneously, uh, not possible because detectors are sensitive to different kind of uh, problems. So, we are interested in only neutrons. So, we have got different kind of neutron ahead. Only neutron selectivity. If you are interested in gamma, you look at uh, some of the processes, nuclear processes, we look at them as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, very nice talk, sir. Uh, my question is that uh, why we so specific to take a uh, good particle? Good particle? Yeah. Is there a Ford experiment? In uh, these accelerators, find out other uh, particle like more uh, lag because what is too much. What has got its own uh, property? We started with code in another Ford experiment because of its capability. can make a very thin sheet. Thin sheet, we will call that if suppose we have a thick sheet and many atoms are more lying on each other, then it will be difficult to find out where the limit is. So they found out the thinnest possible section of code. They started with that so that 
they get at least point out where it is written that you know the outcome of that experiment was when it encountered the alpha particle which is the only charge in the video case, it just came back. That means it encountered the nucleus sitting there. And if suppose you have a thick sheet, when nucleuses are sitting there, so nobody will dare to enter into the sheet. So that was one choice. And the second choice, <coughs> I just asked about uh, the cross section. So the cross section means there is a target nuclei and then there is a Energetic particle which is uh, coming out, and then you have a dotted nuclei, and then outgoing particle which is emerging particle. And every sort of nuclear reaction is having a cross section, cross section, which is a kind of statistical whether you know whether this reaction will take place or not. Quantity of uh, bodies. Yes, yeah, bodies. So, <laughs> you have to choose for your experiment so that you can find out. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Yes, please. So, a few years back, there was a CERN company conducted one experiment for a particle accelerator to create a Big Bang theory. So, my question is that is this uh, that was not successful to study these subatomic particles? So, are we also here in India conducting such kind of experiments? In India, because I told that plenty of our experiments are limited only to million volt. And in million volt, if you calculate a lambda, we mark the uh, dimension of the atomic particles that is the uh, subject of inquiry of science. So, we participate. Many of the researchers have found that if they look at the data, they participate in experiments. And we have a lot of funds a lot. To support the activities of sun, so that the scientific community is very Our experiments are only limited to nuclear physics experiments, not in the particles. That is the biggest limitation. And then you need a collider, not a fixed habit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can we have the question from the students also? Yeah, please. Please come in front. <coughs> so you mentioned that the mass of the particle increases with speed. Why does this phenomenon? This is called Einstein gave two postulates. Special theory of relativity. First postulate is what ostensive the speed of light. And the law of physics uh, are Invariant in what? In the same time. Right? So, go for e is equal to mc square. And that is the basic kind of uh, derivation that you need to understand. And you cannot approach the speed of mind. You should look at the potential. Good question. You see, and we will discuss and we will get to you. You are done. Thank you. In which class you are? He is a ninth class student, sir. There is a relation which is called n is equal to m0. Let us know. n is equal to m0 divided by under root 1 minus d square by c. So if d becomes c, 1 minus 1 becomes what? 0. So f is equal to m0 divided by c0 means integration is not achievable. C cannot be approached by that is relative speed. So there are cases like a scheme like you are required to be from some experiments which cannot be performed, but thought experiments can always be done. And those thought, thought experiments can come inside. Why it is not? Like the twin paradox. Twin paradox is suppose. But definitely, uh, to get an can to get an can in Germany means hot experiment. We can prove that it's not. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now we have more enthusiastic minds here. Please come in forward. Oh. Sir, my name is Jess Kumar and I am from uh, Amity Global School, uh, Grade 7. Uh, one of my doubt is I understood what is accelerator side, but where it plays the integrator rule. 
and understood that. Where, where it plays? Integrator goal, where it plays. Integrator. You want to know that the what are the things in which accelerators are good? Yes. Is there a way that uh, how it is uh, optimizing? Right? Yeah. Name any, any area where you want to use the accelerator. Uh, medical science. Medical. I gave an example. It's about cancer in the body. So, the conventional radio isotopes, whatever be the orifice, suppose you have kept in a vessel, you have put a very small hole inside this radio isotope is sitting here. So whenever this radio isotope emanates radiation, it is isotropic means it comes and it converges like this. Right? You cannot have a pencil beam. I have a pencil beam like this. This pencil beam is giving you it is not diverging like a torch. When you shine the torch, it goes like this. What happens? If you shine that uh, radioactive source to the body, it kills the cancer cell and also surrounding tissue culture. With the help of this uh, accelerator, you can send the particle in a pencil, pencil which you could see here. Otherwise, this pencil is not this spot is not seen. So small. And when it, when it enters into the body, the way we cannot see in between where this beam goes. Likewise. The uh, particle beam does not interfere to the radio <coughs> process. Suppose some uh, tissue is in the cancer is hitting 3 millimeter or 3 centimeter below the surface, it will only hit that cancer cell, not this one example. All the surgical appliances which you use, they are all irradiated first. You cannot uh, boil it again and again. So first it is irradiated, then it is boiled. So that the infections can be stopped. So accelerator is helpful in sending the particles. Accelerator is helpful in sending the particles for a desired goal. Why get away? When it is needed. When it is needed and it is in a shot, it gives an impulse as the cancer is cured. So it diverges. No, because the focus is concentrated. Yes, I will put something in your mind also to read. This is black pink. Black pink means when it enters into the body, it goes like this and suddenly sharp pink is there. So that peak can be cured. Whether we require energy to be deposited at 3 mm, 5 mm, 10 mm. How much energy of the particle should be there so that that big black peak is there? So at that uh, depth, you deposit all the energy and then uh, uh, get that the particle. Okay. Thank you, sir. Same question. Thank you. The next question. Hello, sir. Thank you for your time. I just wanted to ask for synchrotrons. Uh, why must the uh, alternating voltage extend? Yes. 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 I told you, the two are there, and the particle which has uh, started its journey, the two the two right? it gets accelerated through the gap to the magnetic field. Moment it enters into the magnetic field, somebody says, no, 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 this is high force acts. Then, after completing that half circuit, when it enters into the space, Again, it sees something favorable. Gets accelerated. And the moment it gets accelerated, it takes a bigger part. And that keeps continuing. Yes, and then it increases, velocity increases. And suppose consider a case in which the speed of process is going on, velocity of light. The mass also increases. The mass increases, I have not tried. Uh, so, what you see here, here, the time period is proportional to mass, time period is fixed, uh, what will be your velocity? It 
stolen their cars, their rights, etc. But it's a very bad thing. It will take more time. He has to go to his school and he has one shopping. And he has to go to his school and he has one shopping. And he has to go to his school and he has one shopping. And he has to go to his school and he has one shopping. And he has to go to his school and he has one shopping. So you can get deserted on the go of the home. That happens. So what we have to do, we have to think something different. So that a fellow who has more mass in the equipment, is approaching the mechanistic market, can also see the different equipment. Thank you, sir. Sir, um, I am. Uh, I don't want to ask a question. Actually, I am a nuclear physics student. I have done my research under Professor Mandel uh, from University of Delhi. Sir, on behalf, uh, when I was a student, nobody has told me there is a university accelerator center, or you should go there. Or how to go? This is a question on behalf of the school as well as from the college. How these students can approach you? Can visit IUAC. Uh, I have uh, done this class a uh, little before, I mean, two years back. I have uh, taken 30 students from my college and visited IUAC. But now, can you please guide how these two students can visit? Those slides, I've got those slides from myself, but first, that's all. 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 They come, they defend their proposal, and if the proposal is accepted, they got it taken. Okay. So these are kids, I'm so sorry. Yes. 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 Okay, Sabit Mandal also is doing the same channel. Yes. 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 Now, coming to the students, you can write a mail to me. We have got a group. That is responsible for our clients. We cannot do that in the way of the student. Many other doctors cause the patient to have issues. But we do encourage the students like the patients to see what kind of facility we have. How they can be made in the institute. Participating in this way, we have personal modules. Small and total demonstration experiments by which they can be made in the institute. So that is the purpose of what we are counting in the field. And uh, on the uh, 28th, February, Science Day, Foundation Day, in December, our chief guests are coming up there. These students are invited from all the colleges. They sit in my auditorium. And the uh, entire activity is targeted towards them. Thank you so much, sir. We should definitely avail this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for graciously answering the participants' questions and sharing your knowledge with us. Now, I would like to request Dr. Surjan Singh, Vice President IAPT RC1, for proposing vote of thanks to our participants, our chief guests uh, present over here. Over to you, sir. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, dear all who have participated physically and who have joined us online. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of IAPT RC1. IAPT RC1 expresses its gratitude to this organization, that is Amity International School, Mayurvya. Its management, principal, staff, and teacher, and all other full class four staff who have provided the wonderful arrangement for this program, wonderful hospitality, and nice welcome. Thank you, ma'am. IAPT RC1 pays its profound thanks to Niti Ayo for extending support 
for the successful conduct of this lecture to its innovation technique where 16 teams from various schools participated in this motorized paper making plane. This is a great innovation and is being exhibited in Amity International School with the cooperation of Niti Ayo. Thank you Niti Ayo. On behalf of ITPP, on behalf of RC1, I thank a technical team of Amity International School for its support to telecast this whole event to an online mode. It is my privilege to thank Professor Raghunath Sahu, Department of, Department of Physics, IIT Indore, who graced the occasion online and filled us with the knowledge on journey of subatomic particles from laboratory to daily life. I thank sir for your brilliant lecture. I feel elated to thank Professor A.C. Pandey, Director IUAC Delhi, who spared his precious time to bless us on this occasion. Despite of his busy schedule, he has to go somewhere out of Delhi and despite of that, he came and blessed us with the knowledge of particle accelerators. We are thankful, actually we have studied the accelerators and today, especially me being a physics student, came to know how Van de Graaff generator actually works, how cyclotron works, what is synchrotron? Dear students, I want to tell you that in class 12th, you are going to study all these accelerators. Right now, I came to know these accelerators have, have, have been removed from the slavers, but I think it may be for a time being, certainly these accelerators will be included in the slavers again. Because as, as, as Sir said, Accelerator plays an important role in the field of everything. In medicine, we have seen a two-year-old, two-year-old boy was treated with the help of cyclotron, with the help of accelerator, and cancer, disease-like cancer, was treated. So I thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your precious time that you have spared for us. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shruti Bodhsar, son of late Sri Vedratan sir, who was a great physicist. I have attended a lot of workshops by him. And workshops was, workshops were full of knowledge. For workshops which I attended, that was a black itself, black box. And so many physics experiments were there and my students were take, uh, have taken a lot of advantage of that black box. <coughs> At the end, I would like to thank the IAPT national body who is encouraging us and providing us the platform, uh, uh, encouraging us for the progressive path. And under the guidance of IAPT national body, we are at the end, I would like to thank my IAPT RC1 members who came here and 
with the support of Amity International School conducted this lecture success. IAPTRC1 team, Delhi and Haryana region is working under the progressive leadership of Dr. Seema Works. So thank you ma'am, thank you very much. The students and all the participants. I'm sorry if I forgot any name. I'm really, really interested to thank you very much to all of you who came here and made this event a great success. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving such a nice vote of thanks. Uh, I'm sorry on behalf of sir if somebody's name is not taken. So now we appreciate everyone's gesture over here. It is very generous of you to spare your valuable time with us. On behalf of the entire physics fraternity, IAPT RC1 is heartily thanks to Principal Ma'am, Amity International School, Meru Bihar, all the faculty members. All the students who have joined us today here for such a uh, gracious program and the special thanks to our chief guest, Professor A.C. Pandey, sir. We will definitely have him again uh, in near future and we will uh, look forward for Professor Sahu as well physically who has joined us online today. Now I would like to hand over the mic to uh, Professor Singhal so that uh, so that he can uh, go forward for the valedictory session in which the students are waiting for the awards, for the prizes, will for the activity which they have done. They are eagerly waiting. Now I am not taking much time. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So now the time of the judgment that was pending from a long time. So I request uh, our three judges, uh, Dr. Sajwani, sir, and uh, Suman Pandey sir and uh, Sujan Singh sir is coming. Uh, so please, uh, all the teams ready, producer, please start the judgment part. Judges are here. Yeah. It will be very fast, get the two, three minutes to each team and finish it very soon.
So all teams, please hold your breaths. So here are the results. I request our principal ma'am, Amity International School, Mayur Bihar, and uh, sir from Niti Ayo to award the prizes for the winners. As uh, in the beginning, I told you that this judgment criteria is just to evaluate. It's just to evaluate. No one is loser, no one is winner. All have done brilliant efforts and your efforts are commendable. So on behalf of this IAPT RC1 and Niti Ayo, Amity International School, I am going to announce the results. Third prize. Third prize goes to goes to yes, any guys? Goes to team Empire. Please, students belonging to Team Ampere, please come on the stage. And there's a cash prize of rupees 500. MD, students from MET International School, Sake. Congratulations, Peta. Brilliant dinner. Good. Teachers, teacher who have accompanied these kids, please come on the stage. Thank you for the congratulations. Okay. Now, second prize. Second prize goes to Team Tesla. Good, good. Congratulations. And come on the stage. Good, good. Which is good. Boss International School Team. Good. Congratulations. Along with your teacher. Cash prize of rupees 1100. Very well done. Good, good, very good. And now, this is the time. For the first prize. <laughs> to take the award of rupees 1500. Team. Team Kalam. Please come on the stage. Vivekan and the school team. Very well done. Good, good. Congratulations. And please come on the stage along with your teacher. Very good, Peter. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you and congratulations. Yeah. So thank you to all the students and teachers who have come over here. Hope you all enjoyed it. So, uh, so ATL Community Day, the initiative started uh, like three or four years ago with and like to 
give the students of schools who don't have ATL access to have an experience. So I think you all enjoyed it. Students, did you enjoy it? Students, did you all enjoy it? Okay. So thank you to the school for organizing it. I'll hand it over to Principal Ma'am. Kindly collect your lunch box before leaving. There is a refreshment box is there.